So let's move on to the next part of the handbook, which is installing the stage three tarball. So if I just quickly do DF minus H, you can see that the root partition that we've just created has been mounted. So we're all ready to go. Now it says here about setting the date and time. It's a good idea to make sure the date and time is correct. Um, as it says here, you may get strange things happening if the date and time is not correct. Um, so if I type date and check the time, that is correct. Um, but you might want to change it and it says how to do it here. You can either run this NTPD command, um, but it says it reveals the system IP address and related network information to a time server. Um, so if you've got previous concerns, um, you may want to just set the date manually. Uh, so I'm going to put that in and you can see it's synchronizing the time there. And eventually it should come back. You see it's adjusted the time just by three seconds. So yes, it was correct, but down to the nearest second, it wasn't correct. So now I know it is up to date and correct. Uh, it says there how to specify the date manually if you don't want to use the NTPD command. So now we go on to choosing a stage tarball and it mentions a multi-lib which is 32 bit and 64 bit. Obviously that's no use to us and it mentions no multi-lib a pure 64 bit which is also not any good to us building a 32 bit system. So you can see here where they've probably adapted the Hamburg and not been quite um, thorough enough in realizing this part of the Hamburg is about the 32 bit uh, installation. So what we need to do is when we go on to the um, yeah, is it this bit here, selecting the stage three that we need to uh, select the correct one. So I'm going to click on this link. I've just sent the click to that link there, download section. Oh, let's do this first, CD into the MNT Gen 2 partition. So this directory has got our new root file system, which is currently empty. And we're going to fetch this stage three tarball. And you can see it's taken us to the AMD 64 uh, part of the website. So we want the uh, 32 bit. So if we click on this tab here, you'll see we get the 32 bit um, stage three archives. And you'll notice if you are building for an older architecture than i686, so if you're building for uh, say Pentium, Pentium MMX, or even an i486, that there is actually a stage three tarball for that. Uh, architecture. There's also some other stage threes here. If you're if you want to build with the UC libc library rather than glibc, G or if you want to build with System D, um, or even with hardened uh, Linux, then there's these other options. But uh, for this demonstration, I'm just going to be using the bog standard 32-bit i686 stage three. So this is the option I want here. So I'm going to right click that. You can download it. No, you can't download it because we want to get it onto the remote machine. So what I'm going to do is right click this, do copy link address, go to my terminal and type in wget and center, no, not center click. Right click and paste the URL in there. And that should download that uh, file. Now you might want to also, um, yeah, in fact, that actually says there, uh, anything be before a Pentium Pro. The Pentium Pro was the first i686 architecture. Um, Pentium 2 was basically a Pentium Pro with extra commands, I think MMX and probably SSE, if I remember rightly. Um, but yeah, if, so if you want anything that's earlier than that, i.e. a Pentium MMX or a Pentium, 486 you'll want the 486 uh, image now you'll probably want to double check the download 
with signatures so if you click on this stage 3 link it will actually take you to a directory listing so we've gone to a different listing here in fact I've still got the Oregon State University here uh, it doesn't matter which one you use um, whatever comes up whatever's closest to you um, so we've previously downloaded this ISO and booted from it we're now downloading this one here stage 3 i686 as I say if you're using an older architecture you'll want to download from this tarball here the stage 3 i486 and its appropriate digest files system D i686 this is the one you'll want to download from this link here and again the appropriate digests so when this is finished I'm going to download these as well so I'm just going to copy the link for that first one and again I'm going to do wget right click paste put a space in right click copy link right click paste space and right click the last one copy link address right click and paste and press enter and as I said before you can do this all through all on the actual machine without doing this remotely using links um, it's just a little bit easier doing it remotely on a, a graphical environment so if we do ls minus l you can see we've got the actual tarball that we want we've got a contents file that's been tarred up as well or oh, sorry not tarred up it's been compressed and then we've got two signature files as well and just if you want to be doubly sure that you are actually working on the remote machine if I go back to that one do ls minus l oops on the right keyboard ls minus l there's that UUID info text file I created. If we look at the MNT Gen 2 directory, there's the tarballs that I've just downloaded. Um, the date and time of the time, date and time that these archives were created. So it is November the 10th, um, and you'll see they were created in the early hours of this morning. So that's all good. It's all going to the right machine, into the right place. So let's get the browser and the remote terminal back up again and we can, can carry on now. And it gives you several ways once you've downloaded them. It's, it specifies how to download them here and how to use a proxy if you need that. It shows you several ways of validating the, um, the uh, checksum. So if we, for example, take the first one. So we have to fill in the rest of this file name. So stage three. Oh, in fact, it's changed. Obviously, so they haven't updated these notes. If you'll notice, the this, this stage three file name is stage three hyphen i six eight six, whereas in the book they've called it hyphen x eight six. So we just need to change that to i six eight six and press tab. So if I run that now, it will compute locally the. Um, SHA512 signature for this file and then we can display this file here the stage 3 digest file and if we compare the SH512 hash here just look at the first few digits they're the same and also the last few digits is normally enough you can see they're the same and that's a good enough eyeball to prove that the signature is the correct signature of the file that we just downloaded. There's another way to do it using the SHA-512 sum uh, file. So we can again use that to validate it. So this is a completely different program, but it should come up with the same signature. And you can see it's, it is the same. And there's another checksum we can validate here. So we can again use OpenSSL to validate with the Whirlpool checksum. So that's the second one here. 
So you see that one begins 234F27, 234F27, and it ends BE303A. So again, that all matches. And it says you can check the cryptographic signature of the digest.asc file as well to make sure that the checksums haven't been tam tampered with. Let's try that. Uh, so we need to add on open curly bracket dot digests dot asc comma and close curly bracket not a detached signature okay I'm not sure if that proves it's uh, okay or not I guess it's okay. Um, there's no errors. So I have to assume that's okay. So uh, next thing we move on to is to unpack the actual tarball. We can just copy this command and paste it in. In fact, I don't need to copy the fact that I highlight within the Linux environment, the graphical environment. You can just highlight it and center click and it will paste in the command. And let's get that running. I'll extract that stationary tarball we downloaded and you can read about what the um, commands are there, what the uh, options are that have been added to the tar command, what they do. Okay, so that's extracted now. 